Valve and Steam have done the unthinkable. Intel actually looks to be fairly competitive and Nvidia, new GPUs, yay! Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet. But first, a little bit of housekeeping. As you guys probably know, there was only one episode of hot news last week. And let me just be real with you is for several different reasons. Number one, our editor was on vacation, which made it difficult for me because I'd had to pick up the workload there. But then on top of that, there was a accident that happened near my street where a van crashed into a utility pole and took down our internet for two whole days, adding to just that complication. And then number three, I'm busy preparing for our fourth annual charity live stream, which is coming up next week on Wednesday. Cannonball for the Cure will actually have a link in the video description for you to check it out. And that meant that I was doing a lot of behind the scenes work. And then on top of that, I'm also looking to hire people. And then lastly, our son probably had the worst week as far as seizures and uh, other types of symptoms uh, that he's had it since we've moved back to the states and so last week sucked um it was hard and i'm sorry that i only got you one episode of hot news um it's made it very clear to me where there are gaps in my redundancy network of just trying to produce content and i will do better and make sure that we get more but just know that next week's going to be sparse because you know we're going to be live streaming here on this channel for the charity stream so with all of that housekeeping stuff out of the way let's go ahead and jump on in to the first topic which is about the rtx 30 super series i know you want to hear this i know you're so excited you're clamoring for gpus but listen okay i forgot to mention this while we have our charity stream next week we are going to have so many dope giveaways and prizes for you to win we have five full-fledged gaming pcs for you to potentially win we have one gaming laptop worth over two thousand dollars and we have two gpus by themselves for you to potentially win and the, in those five gaming gpus the lowest end gpu that we're shipping one with is an rtx 3060 so if you wanted one of those we have i think it's like I, don't quote me on this. I think we have like $13,000 in PC prizes to give away for the charity stream. So if you're upset about the Super Series, just look forward to next week, okay? More details to come. Anyways, RTX 30 Super Series getting uh, specs coming out from Rumor Mills over on Twitter, which Copite is actually a fairly uh, reliable leaker. So this is not necessarily just a fart in the wind, but we can take a look at the CUDA core specs, the RAM specs, and it does seem to line up pretty decently where you would expect a Super Series to come in. The 3080 Super not quite hitting the 3080 Ti, level having the same amount of vram at 12 gigabytes but fewer cuda cores but more than the rtx 3080 same for the rtx 3090 barely more cuda cores because it's probably just going to be a fully unlocked core and then again the same 24 gigabytes of vram that the regular 3090 has it's just going to be more powerful ish I, you have to drop the price on this nvidia that's absurd the rtx 3070 super again filling that same niche not quite a 3070 ti not quite a 3070 ti but not also quite a 3070 this one makes the least sense same CUDA cores as the 3070 and same VRAM amount, but on GDDR6X instead of GDDR6. 3060 Super having more CUDA cores than the 3060 Ti actually being a really decent like next generation leap and 12 gigabytes of GDDR6. That seems like a card I'd be highly interested in. Let me know what you think of the 30 Super Series down below in the comments. Is it something that you want? HP also indicating that they might have the 3080 Super coming up in an NV all-in-one PC, leaking that as a potential spec upgrade for that potential system and here's a potential that you didn't see coming amd fusing with another company known as mediatek who makes processors and the way that they're going to do this is a joint venture to potentially bring in soc level design and things like 5g wi-fi and other data transmission setups because currently if you're buying any sort of amd soc that has that kind of stuff the, the, the options are remarkably small and usually have the name intel involved in them which obviously you think amd doesn't want that so partnering up with mediatek would be a a great venture for both of them. AMD could get away from Intel Stranglehold and then MediaTek can get their name out there. And then also with AMD's upcoming merger with Zillinx, there's a lot of cross communication and technology sharing that could go on between the two companies. And speaking of sharing, you wanna share some data? Well, you can do it across your entire PC really fast with Kyosha's new PCI Express 5.0 SSD. This is not retail at this point, but hitting 14 gigabytes per second, absolutely absurd. That's basically double the fastest PCI Express 4.0 SSD out there, which makes sense considering PCI Express 5.0 will be double 4.0. Brilliant math. Now let's math into the crypto stocks. I know it's been a week since we talked about this, but guess what? Numbers are roughly the same. I don't remember where they were a week ago, but they definitely were right around here. Bitcoin up 3.33% on the day to be at around $44,000. Ethereum up 8.5% to be at $3,100. And Dogecoin up 
barely anything up to 20 cents, which actually that seems lower than it was exactly a week ago. Am I right? I am right. Hey, yo, Brett's brain remembering things. Let's get in the meme stonks. GameStop down quite significantly, 3% on Friday over the last five days, actually trending downward as well. AMC up barely anything on Friday and kind of also trending downward over the last five days as well. Now let's talk about the other meme, which is Elon Musk and Tesla and their timelines on how they roll things out. Elon Musk saying that full self-driving beta button should have been available on Friday. And why didn't you know it? It was, holy crap. I was excited when I woke up to find out it was sitting there in my car. But at the same time, it's not quite what you think. They're not unveiling full self-driving to everybody. It's a request button that puts you in a queue and then unlocks a feature on your Tesla app known as a safety score, where you have to drive like a really cautious person for an entire week and make sure that your score is within a good range so that Tesla will then give you access to full self-driving, which should hopefully roll out this coming Saturday. So that is something that I'm excited for because then we will be using that on our charity stream it would make things so much fun and having that I'm, I'm excited for it is the general statement and them rolling it out this past Friday actually makes it a really good timeline for me however this does mean that Tesla owners are probably going to be driving slower than you other eyes would think that they would be and you can see here that you enter into the limited access full self-driving beta I can understand why Tesla is doing this because they want to make sure that if there are any issues if something happens you know this full self-driving thing actually ends up hurting somebody or killing people or injuring anybody they could be like listen we verified the users this wasn't us this was the user not paying attention we thought that they were good but according to our insurance calculator which has a few different things such as forward collision warnings per thousand miles heartbreaking aggressive turning unsafe following and forced autopilot disengagement if you fall below the standard on any of those theoretically you're not going to make it into the beta program the beautiful thing though is that they didn't include aggressive acceleration which is perfect because that's what that's that's what a tesla is you just go Vroom but you don't you go Shoo! so nobody knows exactly what safety score you have to hit in order to get into the program but according to tesla's website it said most drivers will have a safety score of 80 or above which your boy has a safety score of 97 this actually is really confusing it should be closer to 100 because i had autopilot on for 98 percent of this drive and it says i did unsafe following and if i did that it was it was the autopilot's fault and it was bumper to bumper traffic how am i not supposed to there's a little bit of a, a, a the tweak and the easing in stage that Tesla needs to do for this, but it's an opt-in program. I am gladly giving them all of this data in order to potentially get access to full self-driving. So um, I'm down for it. Let me know if you want a video of that over on UFD Tech and Tesla might want a video of Samsung making chips for them. Why? I don't know. Elon's has weird desires. You know, they're, Tesla's in talks to have Samsung make their next full self-driving chip. That's the, that's the general gist. Speaking of Samsung though, you want to see the S22 first renders from leaks? Look at this bad boy. What is that? What? What is that? What amorphous blob shape is that on the back of the phone? It's also gonna have a stylus pen. S22 Ultra gonna be a big boy, kind of looks like the Galaxy Note. As you can see here, I've been heard from several different leakers and people who are in the know that this is essentially what they're also hearing behind the scenes and that this is probably close to accurate for what we're supposed to get with the Galaxy S22 Ultra. What is that camera bump? I don't understand it, my friends. And NDC doesn't understand YouTube or Google because they wanna make a monopoly and hey, we're not going to give you our channels and we're not renewing our contract at the end of September 30th, which is the current spat that's going on between NBC and Google for YouTube TV. NBC wanting to pull out of that with them even creating their own website and calling uniechannels.com where it explains that YouTube TV is about to drop 14 channels. This is the pettiest move that I've seen in quite some time from a company that literally is owned by one of the worst ISPs in the entire world. Comcast, you suck. I'm sorry. I'm just, that's my personal opinion. That's not, that's... Uh, it's not facts, just, you know. Anyways, NBC obviously getting super petty about this billion dollar company squabbling over pennies on the dollar, right? Google saying that, hey, if this happens, we don't renegotiate the contract, we'll give everybody 10 bucks off of their YouTube TV pricing, which that doesn't get me my football back, but whatever, you know. Billionaire company's gonna squabble. Who does this affect? Not me, one day it will. But here are billion dollar companies that are doing something that I actually care about. We have anti-cheat on Linux, it's amazing. We've got Epic anti-cheat now popping up over on Linux, courtesy of Epic Games announcing that it does work on Linux and Mac, and Battleeye also saying that that's going to be coming to Linux sometime soon and making it so that the 
Steam Deck, which Valve has said 99% of their top played games should be able to work on launch with the Steam Deck. Their promises appear to be coming true, and it's actually really crazy. It does seem like maybe Valve was waiting for a lot of this negotiation and like anti-cheat stuff and making sure that Proton and everything else was ready to go before they announced the Steam Deck. And once they knew that they were gonna be able to close the deal, they announced it. I'm just, I'm so excited for a company that is not over-promising and under-delivering. Maybe they will on the hardware, but so far they've been like hit for hit on everything that they said that the Steam Deck would be, and I'm here for it. I absolutely love this. And I may love Intel's next-gen GPUs. Maybe, who knows? We'll see when they come out. But there were reports coming out that Asus, Gigabyte, and MSI were gonna be partnering with Intel to come out with add-in board cards for the upcoming Alchemist series GPUs. However, that has been retracted from the initial source that did it, with Intel forcing them to take it down saying, hey, Intel said no, no such thing. This is not happening. Whereas the original source quoted somebody from Intel saying such things. But there are also rumors that the Intel desktop lineup will have three different versions. You got the big boy, you got the medium boy, and then you got tiny little boy. The big boy is supposed to be competing between an RTX 3070 and 3070 Ti, and then the small little boy, not even anywhere in the ballpark of that. Which one would you be most interested in or does it depend on price point? I wanna hear from you down below. And then we also have some indication on what the GPUs could potentially be named with them having the name of ARC and then A as the prefix for whatever GPU it is, which would stand for the Alchemist lineup. And then the next gen would be Battlemage, so it'd probably have a B. So something like, you know, the Intel ARC A1000 might be the flagship lineup or who knows exactly how they're gonna name the schemes, but A is the prefix. There you go, according to the reports that are coming out. And here I go completing an episode of Hot News in over a week. Oh my goodness, it's been so long. It's funny how you just lose the groove on a few different things. I appreciate everybody's support allowing me to take the time off. It was not a break for me. I was working harder than ever. I had more anxiety than ever. It was rougher than ever, but I appreciate you guys giving me the space in order to be able to do that. If you could please mark your calendars for next week, October 6th through 8th, we're driving from New York City to LA, live streamed five PCs to give away, one gaming laptop, two GPUs. It's gonna be absolutely three GPUs. What am I saying? There's three GPUs. It's gonna be massive, my friends. And we have we have a lot of celebrity guest appearances. We have a lot of really good sponsors. Like I'm so excited for this charity stream. I cannot even begin to express it to you, but thank you for partnering our dust in the meantime. Why don't you go check out the last episode I did last, no, don't even do that. You know what, go check out yourself in the mirror reflect on whether or not you should even be watching this channel anymore. Should you? Is it a good look on you? See you next time, friends. Cheers.